I one day will start a stream without having myself muted. I know, I know. Um, I think at this point, the muting, it's a staple. It's a part of the brand. It's not an, it's not a bug, it's a feature. That's that coding mentality. But I hope y'all are doing good. Um, it looks like we have some first time hackers. Also, if you see my eyes all over the place, it's, I just have multiple monitors. But I hope everyone is doing great. I lost track of what day it is. I think it's day two, day three. Can someone remind me in the chat which day it is? It is. I know it's, I know it's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? But I day three, okay, that's exciting. Thank you all for letting me know. So today what we're doing, um, I wanna make sure that y'all learn a little bit more about in it. If you're new, this is your first stream. Essentially, it's a week long of celebrations as we move from our last season to our 2022 season. So that's why it's called in it 2022 because we're initializing, like get in it, get it? It's a coding pun. We love coding puns. Um, it looks like it's actually day Ryan here. So forget numbers. That's not what we're about. We're, do we, do we have a day that's day totally not Ryan? If we have a day Ryan, is there questions? Questions we all have. But with in it, um, we have this week long of celebrations of workshops, of games, and even um, challenges. So today we're actually going to be focusing on a workshop. You may have heard about it before. Um, the workshop that we're doing today is Introduction to Threat Hunting Using Elastic Security. This is actually part of our Pro Local Host series that we run um, regular workshops with throughout the season, not just for these special week-long events. So if you're ever interested in learning more outside of it, definitely check out localhost.mo h.io. I'll also send that so that way y'all can check it out. Or Jacqueline got it. I love that. This is a link. Link right there. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and move y'all to my laptop and go ahead and get something special pulled up for y'all on my computer. So first thing that y'all need to do is, let me share my screen. First thing y'all need to do is get started with checking in. Okay, so if y'all are new to any of our in it um, local uh, local hack days or anything like that, we have a like amazing guilds. And the really cool thing about guilds is y'all can come together with your points and move up on the leaderboard. And one of the ways to get points is actually through checking in. Okay. So if you go to the link that I'm about to send in the chat, you can actually go ahead and sign in right here. You'll know that you're checked in um, after you sign in with your MLH account. And then you click the little button down here, you'll see it turn blue saying, yeah, you're checked in. Um, looks like I have fun fact on the side. I also Twitch stream personally where I hot stack, but right now we do not have the same capabilities. So one day, one day maybe I'll get MLH to integrate hat stacking into the live streams. But make sure that y'all have an opportunity to sign up. I always forget everything's mirrored. Where am I pointing? Don't forget to check in here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and check out here. So this is what the page looks like. I'm a little scatterbrained today. It's a different time. But make sure that you check in on this site. It looks just like this. Check in. OK, that's step one. Step two of what we're going to go ahead and do is let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen with y'all. If you notice me clicking around a lot, I'm probably gonna be back and forth sharing screens. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, that being said, throughout this workshop, if you find me going too fast, too slow, maybe I don't enunciate enough. Just let me know, I can repeat whatever, um, I can repeat whatever, just send it in the chat and I'm happy to go over it. <laughs> okay, so, this workshop, Introduction to Threat Hunting Using Elastic Security. So make sure that you've gone ahead and you checked in using the link down below, and it should be for this workshop right here. Okay, 
So, what's up, y'all? My name is Mara. If you don't know me, I am a MLH coach, which means I love to teach workshops and help out at hackathons all year round, not just for in it. So, I will be leading this session and hopefully we'll be learning something new all together today or at least earning some points. This slide is a little old. I just finished my third year at University of Virginia studying computer science. Um, and I also really love programming using React or Python. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of switching from Python to JavaScript, but you know, we gotta love both for different reasons. So if y'all wanna do me a favor and type in the chat, what is your favorite programming language and why? I feel like I've heard a lot of like Python, like semicolon discourse, you know? People are like, Python is better because you don't have to worry about semicolons. It's just indents. And other people are like, no, I love C++. It has semicolons all the time and it's rough. It looks like we're getting, we need some Python, some Python lovers. Okay, let's go. CPP, C++, okay. Golang, I also have not used Go. Um, Moo, I do not, if that's a programming language, I wanna learn it. What do you use it for? But it looks like, it looks like we have a lot of Python and some C++, but yeah. New, I'd love to hear more about that. Okay, so without further ado, um, <laughs> without further ado, we'll go ahead and learn a little bit about uh, Major League Hacking. This is our a normal like social media slide, but for in it, if you don't want to go ahead and tweet to MLH localhost, you can actually use our special event hashtag, hashtag MLH in it. That's I N. -I and also more information down there. You can see the tweet us. Can you tweet me? Okay. Oh, it looks like we have a job in the crowd. Okay. So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be going over some like five, four, four, five basic things. Uh, the first one doesn't count. It's just a welcome. Welcomes are important, but we're going to learn a little bit more about elastic security, elastic stack, and then also go through some capture the flag challenges. The way it's going to work actually is I'm going to avoid trying to show you how to do it and have you all to tell me via chat what I should do. So it'll be a journey that we go on together. Okay, so if y'all are new to MLH or Major League Hacking and welcome to anyone who is new, the number one thing to take away from Major League Hacking is our mission is to empower hackers. If you're like, mm, what does MLH do? Number one thing, empower hackers, whether that's through teaching workshops, creating a community, or just going to hackathons and interacting with all y'all. We want to make sure that you have the best time possible, whether it's at Init, Local Hack Day, or a member hackathon. So what's really cool about Major League Hacking is by joining and watching this stream and being a part of Init, you're joining a community of over 100,000 hackers who have created over 12,000 projects and live in over 400 cities. I'd actually love to see where are y'all from? I am personally from Virginia, born and raised in Virginia, literally stayed in the same town for the first 17 years of my life. Um, but where are y'all from? Uh, right now I'm in California, which I do, I do gotta say, West Coast definitely hits different from East Coast, okay? Oh, it looks like we have people from all over. Um, West Europe, Colorado, <laughs> South Asia, more East Coast. I think Colorado is like center of the United States. I'm not gonna lie, I do regularly get Connecticut and Colorado mixed up. And I, I know, no I shouldn't, because they're very different, but it's a, it's a character flaw of mine. Looks like California Bay Area, what's up? We're pretty close. Mexico, some more India. We got a lot of India people, New Jersey. Oh, what's up, I see you. Hey, what's up? Central California, okay. Shout out to y'all in India, because I looked at the time difference before I like announced this workshop, and it's like 6.30 a.m. for y'all. Like, I don't know how you're functioning. If it's 6.30 a.m., I'm either laying in bed on my phone, or I'm just passed out. I'm dead. Okay, ooh, looks like there's one from Maryland. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I'm like, we're like state neighbors. Ooh. 
we're in the DMV area. Fun fact for anyone who doesn't know, DMV stands for DC, Maryland, and Virginia, but also for the Department of Motor Vehicles. So if you ever hear someone who's from Virginia or Maryland and DC go, I'm from the DMV area, it just means Washington, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Fun fact, did not know that until I was like 16 years old. Crazy, everyone's, everyone's awake. Okay, shout out to y'all. I always love learning about you, about like everyone who comes. You are, okay, shout out to people who are waking up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., that's crazy. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is an introduction to threat hunting. We're gonna go ahead and set up with Elastic Stack as well as um, using Elastic Security for SIM. Um, that security information event management, I believe, we'll go over that too, to search for different data sources for different attacks. So this is actually a real world tool that's super cool that we're gonna take some data that's already, it'll be given to us. We're gonna take some data and we're gonna feed that into this site and really see what a real log looks like and how would a security analyst in the real world handle the situation. You can do this on Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Sometimes I like, I see it, but I never know how to say it. But yes, this is done via, um, this is done through a web browser. So you'll see the terminal. So for the most part, it should work. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and get started with the introduction to Elastic Security. So first thing first, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to get set up and sign up for a free trial, okay? So that link that I sent you will send you to this page right here. Let me go ahead and zoom in so it's a little easier. I know I have a big monitor and this is on a tiny screen. Okay. So if you have a student account, you either a .edu email or a .ac, I think that stands for academic, I think. But you're gonna go ahead and enter your email here and you're going to get a free trial for 30 days. Okay, 30 days. And you don't have to like pay for anything. You don't need to put in a credit card or anything. Just put in an email, you'll be fine. Okay, and then if you do not have a .edu or a .ac email, you're gonna scroll all the way down and you're gonna enjoy a free trial on them. No credit card required for just 14 days, which is still way longer than this workshop takes. Okay, so come, come join. Okay, so make sure you get signed up here. So check out this this link mlhlocal.host slash elastic you'll end up on this page to repeat this if you have a school email that ends in dot edu or dot ac sign up up here at the top in the blue just put your email start free trial and then if you don't have an academic email or an edu email scroll all the way down to the bottom to the footer It'll be nice and gray. Go ahead and type in your email and still start a free trial. The only difference is you're getting 14 days instead of 30 days. That being said, um, feel free to kind of let this sit. You'll have to answer a survey, so make sure you answer a survey. And then it's gonna say, okay, we've sent you your email and give you a little check. Um, that email may take a little bit. I think it took me about 10 minutes, but do not worry. We'll be going over some basic cybersecurity beforehand um, to cover so that way we can I'll get started on the same page. Okay, is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to download a free trial? Or not download, but email themselves a link to the free trial. So reiterating, sign up for a free trial. There's like, oh, there's not gonna be a link. You're gonna go ahead and sign up for a free trial and then it's gonna ask you a couple questions. Um, it, once you press start, start free trial, it's gonna ask you questions on that same screen, okay? So make sure you answer, there's three questions, I think, you press like the button down below and then you answer another three questions, you press the button down below and it says, okay, we've sent you a verification link, so. Okay. I would do it, I just don't wanna expose my email publicly too much. Okay, give me one second. I'll go ahead and put in another email so that way you don't have to you don't have to worry about not getting something. Okay.
So what ends up happening is you'll probably see, please verify your email. And it says before you head off, it's gonna take a sec to load. That's the thing. It always catches me off guard. It's gonna take a sec to load. And then you're just gonna put in whatever. You can put in new to elastic search, just exploring, put in your email, put in your country slash region. Then you're gonna go ahead and submit. So make sure you're on that same page. If that page doesn't show up, you probably won't get your email. So you wanna make sure that you answer these questions, press submit, and there's gonna be another set of three questions. Okay, well, if you have that right now, we'll go ahead and we'll revisit this, but hopefully you'll get that email in just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna go back, see how, how life is going. Okay, so, if y'all don't know what cybersecurity is, don't worry. Cybersecurity is such a huge field. It has a lot of a lot of intricacies that are hard to learn because they're so big, but at the core of it, it protects the stuff we care about. So this means we can either protect networks, devices, programs, whatever from attacks or damage or unauthorized access. Okay. So the reason this matters is because with security, it's all about trust. So you've probably heard, you know, our data goes here, our data goes there, our data is everywhere. And we wanna make sure that we're in control or we at least know what's going on with the data, which means that, you know, if we are putting in data like credit card information or our birthday and social security number or, whatever else matters, our bank account information, we at least know that it's gonna be protected. Because if you're going to shop online or something, shop online, sign up for free trials with credit cards, you wanna make sure that you're able to, um, you wanna make sure that you're able to trust those companies that you give it to. So a couple examples of some cute, so some, some security breaches, okay? So first, we had 2001, that was about 20 years ago, okay? 20 years ago, still kind of long, kind of recent, depends how you look at it. Hackers were able to take the personal details of 77 million PlayStation, PlayStation user accounts, which is like one of the reasons you have to think about it is if someone uses the same email and password, that's now a security breach for all of their other accounts, okay? And then in 2018, a lot more recently, you'll see that a student was able to create a phishing scheme. A phishing scheme just means that you pretend to be someone you're not to gain access to their school network and modify grades in 2018. So they're able to change what their grade was and like, not gonna lie, that's something of movies. And then even just last year, Google's login system failed, which means people couldn't use any Google services for an hour, okay? And these all fall under the CIA triad. And no, that's not like Central Center for Central Intelligence Agency, yeah, that you might hear about in the movies, not that kind of CIA. This CIA stands for three really important things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So the first, the first case is confidentiality. So we just heard about this PlayStation, um, PlayStation that hacked that happened in 2001, where people had their personal information revealed. When you give something like that to a company, you're told that it will stay confidential. It's only gonna be used for things that matter. You don't want your birthday out there. You don't want your, um, you don't want your email and password out there. You want that to stay confidential, stay secret. Next, you have integrity. So integrity means that you're gonna trust that that data that you put in is right, that it's true. And that's gonna bring us to the case of the student in 2018 hacking their school network. When you check your grades, or if you as a parent are checking your grades online, or as a teacher, you're trusting that those grades put in are correct, that they're accurate. But if someone goes in and changes them, that data, it's no longer secure. And that brings us into the last one, availability. Can users access their data when they need to? So last year, when Google went down and people couldn't log into like their Google accounts for an hour, 
I actually remember that. I was teaching a workshop with someone else and um, I was teaching a workshop with someone else and it required logging in with Google. And because they couldn't log in with Google, we were kind of at a standstill. A lot of people didn't know how to get set up with their accounts and we had to pause and rethink of a new solution. Now, when it's just a Google account, it might not sound too serious. You know, maybe, maybe we don't need our Google account. Maybe it's fine to stay off our email for a little bit, which is okay for just thinking about, you know, I as a student, I can't access my email for an hour. That's okay. But think about it if you are at a hospital and you can't access any of your um, patient information and there's someone who's about to go into surgery who's allergic to something, but you don't know what, then it becomes a life or death emergency. So these are all security issues or threats. So they all start from somewhere. And to, to be able to like mitigate that, to be able to take care of these threats, we need to make sure that we can stop it in its tracks because it's safer to stop the threat before having an attack actually happen. So one thing that we do is called endpoint security. So any device connected to a network is an endpoint. So your phone, your laptop, a smart TV, um, anything like that, even like a printer. That is an endpoint and is at risk of threats. It can be hacked. So you wanna make sure that we're able to protect users, especially as hackers, as hackers who are creating games, creating software, creating web applications. We wanna make sure that the people using our software are able to stay protected. So one thing we wanna do is make sure that we don't get attacked no matter what. And that's kind of, um, and that's, you know, the first step. But sometimes you get an attack anyways. And you need to figure out how it happened. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna download some log data. This is just every request that's, um, every request to visit a site or serve some kind of data that turns into log data. So it's usually just a plain text file that has a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Don't worry, we won't have to read through it plainly. We're actually gonna be using software that um, sorts through it and parses it for us. Okay. Oh, quick question. Looks like someone is still getting, um, someone's getting set up for elastic stack. So what do you want to do with elastic stack? Um, if that's the first question, you can say that you're new to elastic search, or if that's the second question, just say you're interested in security. Okay. okay. Also looks like, how do we get the local host quiz point? I will be giving y'all a quiz at the end. Uh, a link, we wanna make sure we go through all this information beforehand so that way we're ready to ace it. Okay. So next, after we go ahead and we get this log, what we wanna do is make sure that we can find some kind of pattern or sequence or correlation. Correlation is just a pattern that we see all across our data that might help us see where that attack came from. So that means we're gonna check out Elastic Stack. This is really cool because it builds real-time, scalable enterprise search, observability, and security solutions that can be deployed anywhere. Now, while I'm talking about um, Elastic Stack, you're gonna hear me say a lot of things like free and open source. So with Elastic Stack, there's three main things, search, observe, and protect. So what exactly do those mean? First up is Elasticsearch. This is just a search engine to help us go through a bunch and bunch of massive data sets, which is really cool because companies like Pfizer, um, it's a COVID-19 vaccine producer. It, I think it's one of the first ones, one of the big ones, at least in the um, United States. They use it to search through all their scientific data. So it's like what we're using as hackers gets used in the real world by these large companies. Okay, next up we have observe. So we're checking out our logs, metrics, our application performance monitoring, all in one space so we can see what's happening and whether or not we need to react to it. And as again, you'll see that it's free 
and open. That's a big theme with Elastic, um, Elastic Stack. Next, we have data in ingestion. So it's gonna go ahead and use Lodge Stash, again, free and open. All right, say it with me, free and open. Tool that helps kind of make these, makes this data a little more easy to search and also store it. Then we also have FileBeat, which is really, really great if your logs are already JSON files. JSON is just a file type, and that's actually what, we, what we'll be using today. And if you're still like kind of confused, like where did these logs come from? They come from a lot of different places. So they can come from website visits, database access, foreign inputs, web services. What Elasticstack does is it just takes all of that together and makes it searchable. Next, we have Protect. So what's really cool is that they have something called Elastic Security. Again, it's free and open, and it delivers security information and event management, endpoint security, threat hunting, cloud monitoring, and so much more. So essentially, it's there to make sure that you're able to prevent before the threat, detect, see the threat, like during the attack, and then respond, so after the event. Okay. Then, um, then what we're going to go ahead and do is, you know, we've had all this data going all over the place. Computers are talking to each other, but, you know, we're humans. Reading through a JSON file isn't necessarily our jam. It's not my jam. Maybe it's yours. But in order to make that a little bit easier, we're going to use Kibana. Kibana? I feel like I always read it, but I never have heard it. But again, you'll see that it's free and open. And it's a really cool user interface that allows you to visualize that data. So you can do anything from looking at queries or learning how requests work their way through your app. Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. So what we're doing is we're using Elasticsearch, Logstash, Beats, and Kibana. Kibana? to make up the Elastic Stack, which is really cool because this is relevant in other companies or large organizations like Slack and Oxford University. Okay, so now that we've heard a little bit about what Elastic Stack is, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start using it. So hopefully at this point, you've had a chance to get set up with Elastic, um, that you've gone ahead and created an Elastic account. We're going to then deploy the stack with some log data, use Kibana, that user interface, to explore the logs and solve three capture the flag challenges. So if you haven't already, go ahead and check out this site right here to get signed up. Okay. So again, if you have an EDU account, you can go ahead and sign up on this like nice blue screen. Um, if you don't, scroll all the way down to the footer where it's gray and putting your email there. Then you're gonna go ahead and sign up. Um, if you're already fine, you're all good. Then we're gonna go ahead and start the free trial. So this is where I am going to start right here. So right here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And we're going to see that it just says start your free trial right here. Let's get started. Yes, that's the energy I want. All right, then go ahead and let it get here. And I will, I'm going to share just the screen actually. Wait one second. It's a good time. Make sure you're at this area, okay, y'all? Okay. If you have a .com account, go ahead and just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Okay, now share my screen. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and there is a, um, 
me say, there's a gray section that says start your free trial, all the way down the bottom. But first, enjoy a free trial on us. Okay. Just so y'all can see that. Okay, sick. So we've already gotten this far. Make sure everyone is there. Having a good time. Okay, so I'm gonna hope that everyone has a free trial now. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with, since we're doing cybersecurity, we're gonna go ahead and get started with security. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave these settings to be the same and then create deployment down the bottom right down here, okay? Then you're going to see that you're gonna get deployment credentials. Um, make sure you download these. Again, you don't wanna share them with people. I'm only sharing this because I am doing a workshop and like I'm going to delete this count or reset it right after this workshop. So make sure we do not share passwords. That's a big part of cybersecurity. Okay. Okay, so it looks like everyone's got an account created and registered, so make sure you go ahead and click security, start your free trial, and then we're gonna take some time to get ready um, for Kibana. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the trust, I appreciate it. Okay, I'm loving, I'm loving the excitement here. Okay, so hmm, I like to ask random questions while we're waiting for things to happen. So, hmm. Can you all send in chat what your favorite animal is? Also, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? I feel like if I was an animal, I'd wanna be a koala. Do I know too much about koalas? No, but they're cute and they eat eucalyptus and I'm okay with that as a personality trait. Okay, looks like someone would be down to be the wolf. Okay, blue lotus. I'm loving that vibe. What other, what about the rest of y'all? What are your favorite animals? Okay, a bird, a bird's an animal. It's not a mammal. Is it a mammal? But it's an animal. I know it's an animal, I feel like. Now I'm doubting it, you know? But peacock, I like it. Okay, it looks like this is now ready. So as soon as this open Kibana button turns blue, I'm gonna go ahead and click it. Ooh, we got cheetah, orca, oh, and a stingray. So I'm actually from Virginia where we live by the Chesapeake Bay um, and they have something called cow nose stingrays that are local to my area. They can swim up to 25 miles per hour. And they also have this cute little like, they like flap their wings. And they have like this cute little like no cow nose shape. I also used to volunteer for, um, I used to volunteer at a aquarium, so I'm very big about stingrays. Okay. Wait, does anyone know the animal that's the mascot for In It 2022? Do y'all, do y'all know the mascot? I can't remember if it's been announced or not, but I also, don't think I can personally share it. So does anyone know? Are you still waiting? Okay. So now that we finally open Kibana, Kibana, we are going to see that, you know, we have this screen right here. Let me zoom back in. There we go. Okay, okay. So looks like y'all are still waiting. Fish. Froppy the frog. I mean, y'all are on the right track. It does start with an F. Maybe it's a flahage. Here we flahage. Okay, so now if we're all on the same page, what we're gonna go ahead and do is there's an add data button up here. I'm like trying to like move my right mouse around a lot so y'all can see it. We're gonna click 
add data here. Ooh, is that login for Elasticsearch or Elastic Cloud? Elastic Cloud, okay? So y'all should have, um, after opening it, you should have come to this page and then you wanna open Kibana here. Billy the Fox. Just so y'all know, okay, so I'm still pretty new to MLH. I started probably about six months ago. Past mascots have been Ada the AI, something with the B. Was that a bot? No, maybe. Then there was a chameleon. Then it was Ducky the debugger. And of course we had Ellie the elephant. Oh, bit the bot. Thank you. Okay, what data are we adding? That's what we're gonna go over right now. If you did search on accident, hmm, I've never had to go back, but let me see if I can just send you the link for the cloud. Okay, for anyone who accidentally did search on accident, go ahead and click this to open cloud. I think it should be the same account. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, do this, we'll do this journey together. So what you'll see on this page is if you open um, on cloud is you're gonna wanna create a deployment. So make sure you create a deployment and then you're gonna wanna open that up. Okay, so here's the link. Here's the link down below um, to get signed up or to get set up with Elastic Cloud. And if you just joined, you got to go ahead and sign up at MLH localhost slash Elastic. I'm glad that worked. Okay, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are at this page right here that says add data. First thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna click the, oh, we're still at the add data point. We're gonna click logs, okay? Once we click logs, we're gonna go ahead and click Apache logs. Okay. And there's gonna be a bunch, bunch of different options here. So I personally have Mac OS. A lot of y'all probably have Windows. So you're gonna click the Windows page. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it's like to do this from a Mac perspective. But the number one thing I love that I love, love, love about hackers is how supportive you all are. So if you run into Windows problems, send them in the chat. And if you are also installing on Windows, see if you're able to help each other out. Okay. Um, if it shows start your free trial, go ahead and click start your free trial. Okay, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get set up with FileBeat. I think I already, have it, but it doesn't hurt to get started. So I'm just copy the snippet. That's what's really easy about this. Copy the snippet. And then let me go ahead and pull up my terminal really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my terminal on the same page. Bye bye then. We're having a good time. Um, We are going to pull, okay. On the let's get started page, go ahead and click security. Okay. So now we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the snippet. I'm gonna zoom in as much as possible. I'm just gonna paste it, press enter. I'm just gonna do a bunch of stuff. It's not gonna look super pretty. But you're gonna see that it's gonna be downloading a bunch of stuff. If y'all are confused on what I'm doing, I literally just went to add data, logs, Apache logs, and now I'm following the Mac OS options. That being said, um, this is the most download intensive thing. Um, once we get past installing FileBeat, getting our data, we're just gonna do the fun stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna do challenges. So we're all just getting set up. 
Okay, so it looks like I'm, I'm in the right file now. Um, and I can move on to step two. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and modify filebeat.yaml. So you can do this in your favorite text editor, or if you like to edit in the terminal like I do, I just open nano filebeat. If you spell it right, that helps. Dot yaml. Okay. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do for myself is I'm gonna scroll down to Elastic Cloud and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this snippet because we like to work hard, uh, smarter, not harder. And down here, I'm going to take this, leave it as it is, except for the password part here. So we conveniently have downloaded our password so down here, it's the CSV file for me. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. It's gonna take a sec. But it's gonna open. Do you press open Kibana? Yes. Go ahead and click that. Um, yeah, go ahead and click that. Then you're gonna click add data in the top right and let me know when you get there and I'm able to tell you where else to go. Okay, for me, it's taken a sec to pull up the uh, CSV. So I don't know my password quite yet, but that's okay. It looks like we need some time. So it's opening up. It looks like we have some people done with step one. Yeah. It will open after this session. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping not. Okay. After add data, you should be on a page and you should see a tab in like the middle-ish that says logs. Go ahead and click that. And then you're gonna click Apache logs. It's gonna have a, um, click Apache logs, it's gonna have like a feather next to it. Okay. And it looks like I finally got my password, so I'm just gonna paste it in here. Okay. Step two, done. Also, that being said, if you ever forget your password, you can reset it here. Uh, also, that's the same thing if you expose your password and you didn't mean to. That being said, this workshop is hard to run through with y'all without showing my password. I just ask, please don't hack me. Okay. If you need sudo privilege, oh, I'm admin on my computer. Go ahead and do sudo if you're able to. Otherwise, hmm. you, you should be able to. If you can't do it in the terminal, try opening it up as a text file. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to step three. Oh wait, let's go ahead and go back to step two. Where do we have to add this info? Scroll all the way down until you see, where did I write this? Scroll all the way down until you see, scroll too far down, until you see elastic cloud. Now I zoomed in too far, you won't be able to see it in the middle, but you go ahead and just do elastic out. What was step one before edit configuration? Okay, so if you are not sure about like what your commands are, if you go on this page getting started, you can see it on Mac OS, um, I think for dev, RPM, and Windows, they all have their own instructions. So if I'm going a little too fast or a little too slow, just follow along with this. It's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Can I use Git for Windows to run the commands? Um, all right, if you're talking about Git Bash, possibly, but I think it, it's better to use PowerShell um, or like a more general terminal. But I mean, if it works, it works. I, again, I don't know too much about Windows because I personally use a Mac. Okay, so again, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and put that information in the Elastic Cloud section. Um, if y'all aren't sure on how to get here, 
what you do is you open up Kibana. Go ahead and open it, it's authenticating. It's loading. It's gonna take a sec. Oh, it's taking more than a sec. So once you get to, uh, once you open up Kibana, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Um, you're gonna see a page and on the top right, it's gonna say add data. Click that, then you click logs, then you click Apache logs, and it should get you to this getting started page. The link is gonna be different for everyone because it's gonna be off of your personal deployment, so I can't just send you my link. We have to put the password in the password field of the snippet. Yes, yes you do. Okay, so I personally have done step two. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that one. I'm gonna do step three. This one seems pretty easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and do copy snippet. Copy snippet and paste here and run that. If you do have a Windows computer, chances are what you'll have to do is you will have to um, download a zip file, unzip it, and then follow the commands listed on that page. Okay, now I've gone ahead and I've run the snippet from step three, but it does require us to modify some settings. Okay, so for us, what that requires is that we're gonna go ahead and get some data, okay? So we can't, we can't do anything after, we can't finish step three without, you know, getting some data. So what that means for us is we are going to go ahead and go to this site right here. Um, is any, does anyone have Windows and knows why you might not be able to extract a zip file? Are you able to show what the error is? That might help. But for everyone else who just needs data, you're gonna go ahead and take that link, paste it, and it's going to download you some data. So I'm gonna put it in the access logs. I'm going to replace it, because I already have it. And right here. Okay, if you're still trying to get FileBeat set up, it's a-okay. I'll I'll probably just like run through this and then I'll open things back up for y'all to see. Okay. I'll try to go also a little bit slower. So what the log data has is it just has a bunch of data that probably isn't super readable to your eyes. It doesn't quite make too much sense. So that's the data that we're going to be loading into Kibana to allow us to you know, search through it in a more effective way, a little more human friendly way. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to do nano modules.b slash apache.yaml. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this file, edit this file that um, is specified right here. If you wanna do it through another text editor, you can just to keep myself from having to switch between screens, I'm just doing it on the terminal. Okay. So, what we'll go ahead and see here is pretty normal stuff. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to set a custom path, okay? So we're just gonna remove the pound sign, that comment out and we're gonna go ahead and press enter. Now, the weird thing about this that I found is tabbing does not work. You just have to do spaces. So I just space my way through, do a hyphen, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just put the, uh, put the full path of where this file is. So for me, it's gonna be in my downloads, like this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off error logs. They're really great in general, but for our purposes, um, we're not really using error logs right now and we don't wanna 
clutter up our area. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at chat right now. I'm gonna leave this open for a sec in case anyone's at step three and trying to check it out. Um, then let's go ahead and see what what you're talking about. Okay, modify the settings under, under output.elasticsearch in this file to point to your um, Elasticsearch installation. So go ahead and add, it sounds like there's a place to add your file path for where um, where you installed your Elasticsearch, it looks like you can go ahead and put it in this file right here. If anyone has a specific example that they're able to share who has Windows, that'd be great. Okay, let me know when most of y'all are able to get to this place. Hmm. So if y'all have windows and you're able to get this set up, make sure to help each other out. I'm trying to make sure. Just follow. So you're going to go ahead and download the zip file. You're going to extract the zip file. You're going to rename the folder to FileBeat, and then you're gonna go ahead and open your PowerShell as an administrator. And then you're gonna go ahead and run this code right here. Then what you're going to do is, has anyone with Windows enabled Apache? What's up with the modify setting in file on step three? If you haven't done the step three um, changes, you have to add them here. So what's gonna end up happening is we add in the var pass, we go ahead and lead it to our access logs wherever you've saved it. And we're gonna go ahead and disable the error logs. Okay. So go ahead and just follow the instructions until you're able to start file beat, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and wait to start file beat until I hear that some of y'all are doing good. Okay. I know sometimes this like does take a sec. It's a lot of downloading and that's like, I feel like the hardest part about workshops. But soon we're gonna get to capture the flag. Literally, we're gonna go over a little bit more on how to navigate the space, and then we're gonna go ahead and do a security, um, a cybersecurity capture the flag challenge. Okay. So I'm on step three, where I've gone ahead and modified the settings in modules.d slash Apache YAML. It just looks just like this. You go ahead and add a var path where you add exactly where the logs are and you're gonna go ahead and disable the error logs, okay? Can I go over step two again? Yeah, of course. So step two, you just open up filebeat.yaml, I'll make this bigger. And you're gonna scroll all the way down, all the way down to Elastic Cloud, okay? Then you're gonna copy the snippet from right here. You're gonna copy it, and you're gonna paste it in this section. The only thing you have to change is the part where it says like the arrow password. You're gonna fill that in with the password that you downloaded earlier. So make sure you download it. Um, you're having trouble with PowerShell installing FileBeat. Okay. Um, are you talking about this code piece right here? Beware of the Jabberwocky.
All right, just to, just to reiterate, make sure that you have security, um, security development, whatever you paste, uh, copied from the snippet, and then the only thing you have to change is your password. Okay. And then how can you get the VAR path for step three in the system? Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back up. So what we just did is if you went to mlh.host/elasticdata, that's where you're trying to, um, that's where you're gonna go ahead and get the log data. So all you're doing is going there and you're gonna download it. For me, I sent it to my downloads. I just saved it in users, Mara, that's my username, downloads, and it, the file is called access logs. The var pass is essentially just a way for you to point and go, hey, my log file actually is specifically right here. Use this specific log file. So that's what we're doing. Um, and if you're downloading file B, what you can do is actually the instructions are all um, the instructions are all able to be done through terminal. If you're wondering how to access the files, um, you can actually just go ahead and use something called nano. Okay, you can just do nano file b dot yaml. So if you're on a Mac, you can just do it like this so you don't have to find it. And you just scroll through and you type. Yeah, you can point it anywhere, but specifically you want it to point to where your access logs is. Okay. So if you're on Mac and you're like, mm, I don't know how to find my folder, just go ahead and run this in terminal, nano filebeat.yml, and you'll have the same view I do. And then to save, you just do control X. I do mean control, not command. You do control X and then you do control Y. Or control X and enter. Okay. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and finally start file B. So all I'm doing is copying the snippet right here and I'm just gonna paste it. Oop. Make sure that I'm, oh. I'm in the wrong section, so it's important to be in your OS. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna go. I'm doing step four: start file B on Mac OS. It's gonna go ahead and do a bunch of things, and that's okay. We're just gonna let it let it do its thing for a little bit. We might see an error, and that's a okay. We do expect to see one error because we are using the trial version, so there are some limitations, and it's just telling us, hey. You can't do this thing, but that's okay. We don't need to do that thing. It's all good. Okay. I know watching code happen, exciting, fun time. Um, but what are, how are y'all doing? How are y'all feeling? I know it's a little, a little rough to get it started, but after this, it will be a blast. It'll be fun. There's like cool things that we can do that I, you know, the first time I like, I went through this workshop myself, I was like, wow, there's a lot of things about cybersecurity I don't know. I am glad you're very excited. I honestly, this is one of my favorite workshops just because I don't know, it, it feels so like tangible. Is access logs in your downloads a directory you made? No, I did not actually make it. Um, it's not a directory. It's from when I went to this page right here, mlhlocal.host mlh slash elastic data. I just went ahead and saved that to my downloads folder. Access log is one file, it just doesn't have an extension. Okay. So once it's run for a bit, we're gonna go ahead and check data. And it looks like nothing's been received yet, but there's a bunch of things happening, so we're gonna let that happen. But if at any point, like you have this running, you're like, mm, I wonder if it's working. Go ahead and just click check data. And it looks like data has been successfully retrieved from this module, okay? So I, I am good. 
I've gotten all the data I need all done. How are y'all? And do we need to go back to something? Okay, looks like shout out snaps. Okay, we love that. We love celebrations for getting data. Try and LOL on step three. That's a-okay. Step three, a little bit of a toughie. Um, let me see what you have a window, so let me let me see. So just run that snippet and then let me I'm opening another file so that way we can see this. So if you're on step three, this is what it needs to look like for you. Okay. So you just need to add this var pass. I do want to say that you should probably use spaces, not tabs, because I've tried it with tabs before and I found that that started a problem. So that's something you need to put in. And then you need to make sure your error logs are disabled. Okay. So first things first, you wanna make sure it says module, Apache, um, access, enabled, true. And then you have var pass. And then you're gonna go ahead and put the full path to your access logs, okay? This might look a little bit different if you have windows, um, just cause I know y'all have like the whole like C colon slash thing. Um, but this is what it looks like for a Mac at least. So this is just the file to my access logs. And then we're gonna go ahead and disable error logs. We don't need them right now. We're just focusing on access, okay? And then once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and save it. And then you're going to go ahead and start file B. You're just gonna follow the instructions, copy the snippet there, and then check to see if your data has been retrieved. Um, it's gonna take a sec for it to load, um, but just like keep checking every time it looks like your terminal's like stopped for a sec. Um, and once it turns green, it means we're all ready to go. Okay. I know three is like the hardest snap step. Okay, how do I modify? Um, okay, so how do I modify file B in Mac Nano? That's okay. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do, you just do Nano, and then you do the file that you wanna do. So I'm doing nano modules.d slash apache.yaml, so you click that. It's gonna open up in a view like this. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do, for example, is I'm going to change this here. You're gonna see that's modified. You can type wherever, you can't click around. You have to use like your arrow keys, but it's a-okay, it's pretty like small file. And then to save it, you're gonna press X to exit. You're gonna press Y to save, and you press enter to just overwrite, overwrite your old file. Um, I forgot to disable error logs. Um, yeah, go ahead and just rerun um, step four, just to make sure that you don't have any like random logs popping up. I haven't actually tried it with the error logs to be fair, uh, to be transparent, but it's better safe than sorry. We wanna make sure that we only have a certain amount of data to look at, otherwise it can get pretty overwhelming. So go ahead and just run the fourth command again. But on the bright side, it's the last step. You're almost done. Okay. Let me know if anyone I'm gonna go ahead and open that file again because I know like that file, I don't have that saved anywhere. So go ahead and show that to y'all. Um, doo -doo -doo. Where are y'all? How are y'all doing? When I run it again, that's okay. Your, did it, did it break right there? Did it stop or is it still going? You might have to wait a sec, but I'm pretty sure I got that too. And you just wait and it continues. That being said, like you are going to get some warnings, some errors, that's gonna happen because we are using trial version. Um, so that's a-okay. Um, we're all good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this now. Please let me know if you need me to open it up. And this is what it looks like once everything is set up. Um, Go ahead and blue lotus. Go ahead and um, go ahead and try. Hmm. 
Where would you set that? That's a little. All right. Okay. It started loading. Okay. Cool. 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 We do love. We do love loading. What's up, sweaty butt cake? I hope you are having a great day today. Um, looks like you're a security analyst who uses Sims daily, um, and you love to learn how to search in Kibana. Honestly, that's amazing. Learning new technologies. Also, if you have anything to chime in about Sims that you feel like we're not covering, send me in chat. I'd love to like. I'd love to learn a little bit more. I'm definitely not personally a security analyst. Um, I'd love to learn more. Mm, okay, so this is the thing I was talking about earlier where you want to make sure you want to make sure that down here um, down here use spaces not tabs. okay? So use spaces, not tabs. I've gotten that error before because I used the tab. It might seem silly. Sometimes it just happens. Okay. So try spaces. I did. Um, I think I did one, oops. I did one, two, three, four, five, hyphen, space, and then my path. So yeah, use five spaces, a hyphen, another space, and then your path. Yeah, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little silly. There's definitely a reason for it. Um, I'm just so used to tabbing. Okay. So go ahead and make sure your data has been checked or that your data has been received. So check the data and if it's green, you're ready to go. If it's yellow, um, make sure you followed all the steps or if you're on step four, just let it wait a little bit. Okay, it looks like data successfully retrieved. Okay, let's go, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that open for now. And once we're, all good. What we're going to go ahead and actually do is there's a button down here. It says when all steps are complete, you are ready to explore your data. So we're going to go ahead and open this dashboard here, Apache logs dashboard. Click that. I'm going to go ahead and open the logs. Okay. So one thing you're going to notice is that when we open this, I'm gonna go ahead and close this terminal. I'm gonna bring it to another, there we go. When we open this right now, right off the bat, it's on the last 15 minutes. Do we have anything in the log data that's for the last 15 minutes? No, so nothing's gonna show up. It's gonna say no results found. So we're actually gonna go ahead and show dates and we're gonna change the time a little bit, okay? We're gonna go ahead and make it absolute just to make life easier on us. We're gonna bring this to 2020 and we're just gonna put it at the start of last year. Wow, it's been a year, can y'all believe that? And then we're gonna go ahead, all right, let's make that midnight. And we're gonna go ahead and update. Okay, it's gonna take a sec. But now it's gonna look like there's actually stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for a little bit because I know it takes some time. Um, but let me know how y'all are doing. I wanna make sure we keep like a healthy pace. I know downloading always takes a long time. It's honestly the roughest part of um, any workshop. Okay. So this is what our this is what our dashboard should look like. You're gonna see a bunch of things. You're gonna see all these cool browsers. You're gonna see all these cool operating systems, um, all these different like places, like source IPs and where they're from. Looks like there's a lot from what's that state? Is that Colorado? There's someone here from Colorado. Is Colorado right above Oklahoma? I like swear I did geography in third grade, but I have not touched geography since. So, yeah, not, um, states, not my strong suit. Okay, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is even, you don't have to do this stuff, this is just to help you visualize. So if you're a little behind, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna click the hamburger stack in the left, those three lines, 
And we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. Okay, scroll all the way down until we get to security. Okay, I'm gonna click overview, overview. It's right here. Okay, now once we're here again, we're going to have to go ahead and redo the whole um, changing the date. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show dates. And we're gonna click it. We're gonna make it absolute. And we're gonna, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna make it the beginning of last year, midnight, January 2020, to now. And we're gonna go ahead and update. It's gonna take, it's gonna take some time. And then once we refresh, we find that we can't see any data. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna open untitled timeline down here. And we're gonna make sure all data sources Okay, show advance. We make sure all data sources set, say file beat hyphen asterisk. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And then we're gonna go ahead and click post. Okay, so here we're at host. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, you're going to see all this different information. It's going to be 100, 1,755 source unique IPs, and then zero destinations. And you're just going to have one host. We're going to scroll down. We're going to see what that host is called. For me, the host is named localhost. It might be different on your computer, so make sure you keep track of what yours is. Mine is localhost. Keep track of what yours is. We're going to be using it to uh, filter out some data in a sec. Okay. If anyone's on Windows, let, um, let Sid know in chat. What did you select in the data sources drop down? All I did was I clicked Untitled Timeline. I clicked All Data Sources. I clicked Show Advance. And I just made sure that it said file beat hyphen asterisk. Okay. That's it. I didn't actually like click anything. I just made sure it said file beat hyphen asterisk. Um, error setting up ML, that's A OK. That's a part of the trial error code. So don't worry about that. You should be able to continue past that and check to see if your data has been sent. Okay. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to close out of this timeline, or yeah, this timeline, we're going to go ahead and click network. So this is where we can see where all the log data originated from. Okay, there's, there's a lot of, here, scroll down to the map. A lot of different things here. Um, once it loads. See, so, but like once it loads for you, you'll probably see that it's going to be all over the world. See all these like blue little houses? They're all over the place. Even some in North Asia, a lot on the East Coast, some in Africa, some even in Australia. Looks like we even have one all the way over here on um, in Telecom Cook Islands. Okay. So it's all over the place. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to go to detections. So this is where we're gonna do a bulk of our work. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and see what is going on here. What have we found? So to kind of check out all the different events, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna click Untitled Timeline at the bottom. I've opened this up a couple times, so I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna keep it pretty open here. Okay? So it looks just like this. 
Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is in the timeline, we're going to click add field, okay? You're gonna say the field is going to be host. I'm just typing host to help make it pop up. It's gonna be eight, oh, not agent host name, it's gonna be host host name. Give it a sap. Host dot host name. And it's gonna be whatever your host name is. So for me, mine is localhost, yours might be different. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And once we save, you're gonna see that we're gonna have one host, um, 1.755 thousand source IPs, um, and it's gonna go ahead and load some events. Okay, so these are all these are all the logs that we've uploaded via file deeds. Might take a sec to give me a sec to scroll down. Go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You're gonna see a bunch of different events over here. Okay, all down there, those are all different events. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is you can kind of see, you can see things like when the event happened. Oh, the screen's a little blurry. Let me, let me zoom in. Let me see if I can just scroll down. But things that you're gonna see are going to be things like timestamp, when did this happen? Um, what kind of event it was? What was the host name? The host name's gonna be your host name. And then also the source IP, which is just where it came from. So let me go ahead and see if I can scroll. So I have to zoom, I have to zoom out a little bit. Okay. Source IP. Okay. So now you should be here. You see a couple things. Um, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're actually going to be able to filter by a lot of things. So what we can do is you see source IP right here. Maybe we want to get all the events that come from this specific source. So one way that we can do this is we can click this arrow right here. It's going to take a sec to load. This arrow just says view details. Okay, so it's right here on this left hand side. And it's going to open a sidebar on the right that has more information. Okay. So let's say that we wanna go check out all things from the source IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter out here. I'm gonna put at the top source. IP, that's what we're looking for. We can see this value right here. If I click it and drag, it should follow my mouse. And I can say everything that comes from my host, which is local host, and has the source IP here, go ahead and show me all those events. Okay. And you'll see that it's going to be it's gonna be a couple events, eight events specifically, and they're all local host with the same source IP. Okay. So that's a really easy way to query things. All you have to do is do a drag and drop. But sometimes you're gonna to wanna to make something a little more custom. So that's where you're gonna use KQL. That's gonna be Kibana Query Language. So that allows us to come up with more custom, um, more custom queries just using some text. So what we can do, we can do things like, we can put them here in this uh, search, and we can say at timestamp, so we're referring to the timestamp. Um, if it's before now minus 5M. This is just an example of, um, 
this is just an example of saying like, hey, pull up all the results that were in the last five minutes. So I'm gonna also send that into the chat for y'all to reference. Something else that you can also do is you can say, you can even check for like operating systems. So you can do machine dot, oh, or you can do cloud dot machine type. You can do colon, and maybe you want something like Windows, but you don't know exactly, you can do win and then asterisk. That asterisk is gonna be a wild card. Or if you just wanna make it equal to asterisk, it could be any type. That's not relevant right now because we have a lot, we specified it too small, but for anything like that, we can do, um, we can do the colon, asterisk, be any. So it's gonna go ahead and load now. So colon helps with partial matches. Okay, so example of that is source IP. We can do colon right here saying that we're down for any source IP. How do we bring up event details? Great question. So all we have to do is once we have this open, um, you're gonna go ahead and find the row you want and click that side arrow, click that, and it's gonna go ahead and view details. Okay, and then it's gonna go ahead and load. It's a little slower on my end, because I'm streaming, but it should be a little faster for you. Okay, then now what we're gonna go ahead and do is like, we actually have the opportunity to do some capture the flag challenges, okay? So let's go ahead and get this set up for y'all. It's loading. Oh, can I do a recap from the dashboard dashboard part? Yes, I can. Um, okay. Mm, from the dashboard part. Oh, because you just got it set up. Okay. Um, let me open up Kibana again, straight from scratch. So I was just kind of showing you like different things. Uh, the most important thing is you're going to go ahead and go I'm gonna go ahead and load. And I'll just go back here. So if I close this right here, sorry, my computer loves to wait until it has an audience and then act up. So I'm on detections right here. Don't worry too much about this, but the way I did it is I went to this hamburger stack in the top left, this little menu icon. I clicked it. I scrolled all the way down, all the way down to security and then detections. And then what I went ahead and did, go ahead and get out of that, is you just go to untitled timeline. Untitled timeline. And then you're gonna say host.hostname and whatever your computer name is. If you don't know what it is, then you're gonna need to go to open up the hamburger menu again. Um, you're gonna need to go to security and network. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see your host name. One thing that I wanna say is make sure that, make sure that the time up in this top right area, as soon as this timeline closes, this time right here is set for January 1st, 2020, all the way to now. Cause if it's set for like five minutes ago to now, you're not gonna get the valid data that you need. What's up, Ashton? How are you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Okay, so now we're here. So this is how you get to the dashboard. Now we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about cybersecurity challenges, such as our Capture the Flag challenges. They're called CTS for short. So if you're interested in logging officially, you can go ahead and check out challenges.nlh.io. Perfect. And... 
then you're going to go ahead and scroll down to Elastic Security Challenge. You don't have to do it through the site. It's fun for like keeping a record and there's also a little leaderboard you can go on to it, um, but you don't have to do it to participate, okay? Just so you know. Just to give you all the first capture the flag, your team detected unauthorized access to employee-only resources at 1.04 a.m. server time on May 18th. You need to find out what happened. Um, if you do it through challenges.mlh.io, it does give you a stopwatch um, that tells you how long it took you. And you're gonna go ahead and use Elastic to find this challenge and find the flag. So the flag is gonna be something hidden that just says that's gonna be in curly brackets, okay? So I'm gonna give y'all a sec. I'm gonna go get some water, but I will be keeping an eye on chat. Let me know if you need any help. Feel free to start the capture of the flag now. Um, I'm gonna give you all about a couple minutes before I start doing the capture of the flag with your help. We are using Apache logs. If you have, is labeled, it will be labeled flag curly brackets. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my camera for a little bit, get some water, be right back. Um, but just so you all can look at this, and when I come back, we're gonna go ahead and do this capture the flag together. So try to get as far as you can so you're able to help me out because I will be doing the least amount possible. I want you all to figure it out. Okay, see you in a sec. What is up, y'all? I am back. I'm hoping that y'all had a chance to kind of think it through, maybe come up with some ideas. So this is something that we can do through the timeline just by filtering data, but there is there is a catch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my timeline. Um, does anyone have any suggestions on how I can find this attack that happened on May 18th? May 18th. 1.04 a.m. server time. Okay. Hmm. We can try, I can try going to the time right here, start out with something that we're familiar with, and I'll go all the way to May 18th. 2020 from midnight to, and I don't want to do now, so I'm just going to do, or it's going to take some time to load. 
I'm gonna go ahead and just update this actually. That's gonna take a sec. But besides just filtering the time, are there any tips on how I can filter the time? It's interesting that it specifies server time. Why do we think it specifies server time? So I'm gonna go ahead and sort this so I can see things that start a little bit earlier. So I'm currently on Pacific time. And I see that there's things that like May 18th, midnight, midnight 05, keep scrolling, just keep scrolling down. A lot of things happen at midnight 05. So I'm gonna specify, specify the time is actually at one, let's go ahead and just do four, 104. Let's enter, have an update. I'm gonna take a second to load. So chances are, if you tried it the same way too, you probably didn't see much happening or didn't see anything that popped out at you. So I'm gonna go ahead and see that nothing happened. There's something at 105, but nothing happened at 104. So the important hit right here is server time. And the server just happens to be in UTC time. So I'm gonna look up May 18th, 104 a.m. UTC to PT. This just means Pacific time, yeah, Pacific time, and that's currently the time zone that I'm in. So it looks like UTC is seven hours ahead of Pacific daylight time. The really cool thing about capture the flag challenges are that you can look it up and you 100% should as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the time difference. So if it's 1 a.m. there, it's 6 p.m. The, the prior day. Yeah, it looks like it's 6 p.m. the day before. So instead of wanting to look at May 18th, 104 a.m., I'm actually going to go ahead and look at May, let's look at, shoot, can take a second load, May 17th, instead of one, we're gonna go ahead and look at 18. So that's gonna be 6 p.m. Go ahead and update that. Has anyone found the flag yet? So we'll see that by changing the time, we look like we changed the number of source IPs. That makes sense. And it looks like we do have one thing that happened at May 7, on May 17th at 6.04 Pacific time. So that's my local time. I'm gonna go ahead and open the details here. Okay, let's see what we can find out about this event here. Gonna take a sec to load. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll through. We're gonna see what information can we find? What's going on? So I'm gonna keep scrolling through just checking it out. And let's see if anything happens. What's going on? So it looks like, hmm. Has anyone been able to find the flag yet? It's somewhere, I'm gonna give you the hint, it's somewhere in the event details. 
let's see if we can actually filter. We could do flag. Doesn't look like we were able to find something right there. Hmm. You know those curly braces? Maybe we could filter by curly brace. See what pops up. Okay. So we'll go ahead and scroll down just a little bit more. We're going to keep scrolling until you can actually see at the URL original we go ahead and we actually get the flag here. It says admin, here, I'll send it to y'all. It's gonna be at your URL original. And it says admin flag, and it looks like the flag is your first one. So we just got our first flag, we completed challenge one. So if you're actually on uh, challenges.mlh.io, you're gonna go ahead and click um, you're gonna go ahead and click that challenge and type in your first one. So woo, we got it. But we do have two more challenges that we're gonna try to run through, okay? So the second one, oh, fun fact, if you wanna look at the solution right here. Um, the second one right here is perhaps this attacker isn't new, perhaps this tacker has tried something else. So challenge two, has the same IP done something else malicious? I'm gonna leave y'all there. Think about it for a couple minutes and I will be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my video, but I'm gonna be right here to answer anything in chat. So I'm gonna give y'all some time so that way you can look at it um, and try it yourself before we do it together.
Hey, what's up, y'all? I hope you had some time to try out challenge two. So now we're here with the event details from challenge one. Does anyone have tips on how to get started? So where do I go from here to get started with challenge two? What should I do? Does anyone have any suggestions? If I've already completed challenge one and I have this hacker pulled up, what can I do for challenge two? How can I find out if the same IP has done anything else malicious? Search for source IP, yes. So what I really love about this UI is that it's so easy that I have the source IP right here. All I have to do is click it and I'm just going to drag it. Sometimes it takes a sec. I'm gonna drag it up there. So it's gonna filter on the same source IP that this hacker has. Only thing is I have a slow, uh, a slow computer. So instead of doing it like that, did it work? Did it work? Nope. So instead of doing it like that, I'm going to go ahead and do it right here and using the KQL, the Kibana query language. So we're going to see that if I filter based off the time that I only have the original path. So I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bring this back a couple days and I'm going to update. So search, so I searched for source IP and now I'm filtering the IP over a wider time frame, time range. And it looks like actually earlier that day, someone with the same IP address did something else. So let's go ahead and check out the event details of that. So where, where can I find the flag for this? Does anyone know? This one, I'm not gonna lie, is a little trickier. So where do I find the flag for this? Let me keep, keep scrolling through. Just checking out the event details. Where can I find the flag? That was interesting. Base64decode.org. Huh. Looks like this looks a little sketchy right here. Admin plugins, easy password recovery, and then a bunch of things right here. So it looks like we're getting decode the URL. And it looks like Blue Lotus got it. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. I'm actually going to see if I can. Sometimes the hardest part about this is just getting the data. Okay, that's not what I want. Can I copy it through these buttons? Copy, that's, that's a copy button. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go to base64decode.org. So you said decode the URL. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paste the URL here and I'm just going to, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make sure it's just the URL. I'm gonna go ahead and decode it.
It looks like a bunch of random stuff. This is a quiet it. If y'all are wondering what website I'm using, I'm just using this one right here. So what should I be decoding? Hmm. Should I decode the whole thing or should I focus on something? The U parameters, okay. Let's go ahead and get rid of everything else. We'll go ahead and decode. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna scroll down, it's a moment of truth. Flag, you got another, okay? So shout out to Blue Lotus and for her sweaty butt cake for getting that, okay? So that was all we had to do. We just had to find the same source IP, get that link and use base64 decode. Let's go over how we found that hint. So the first hint was what if that same hacker or someone from that same IP tried something before? That's how we found out about this event that happened just hours earlier. Then we went ahead and looked. Now, a capture the flag is essentially like a, tech, a technical escape room. So there's hints all along this. So like right here, there's a URL that just says base64decode.org. And then you go down here and you see that, huh, password recovery, that looks a little sketchy. And so using the hint for base64 decode and using what we have from this, um, this password recovery, we're going to see that, you know, maybe there is a flag there. Maybe these are the hints that lead us to the answer. Okay. So then what we're gonna go ahead and do is this is gonna click us through showing us like what the answer is. Okay. And now we're on capture the flag number three. Okay, so we detected an attack, but um, unlike before, we actually already know how they did it. But the question is, were they the first person to try or just the first person to get caught? So we just found out what the attack was from section two. They try to do a forget password using stuff like the admin page. So now this final challenge to leading question is, has anyone else tried the same attack? Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you all not as much time this time. We're gonna go ahead and figure it out together just to stay on pace. Um, oop just to stay on pace. So how do we want to do this? How can we find out if someone did the same attack? We know we have this URL original, but how can we figure out if they've tried the same attack? I'll give you all some time to think about it. It's kind of hard. So the attack here is that they have used admin plugins, easy password recovery. So they're trying to hack using the password recovery. Night, Adam. Oh, crazy. It's 3.48 a.m. Do you go to sleep? I hope you have a great rest and I hope you're well rested for tomorrow for day four. Okay, so to kind of keep us on track, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to go to url.original. We're gonna filter based on url.original. Now, we know that it's admin slash plugins slash easy password recovery. But 
you know, we're actually going to see if there's anything else that starts with something similar. So we're going to add an abstract, and an abstract is going to be part of like a wild card. It's going to help us figure out whether or not something similar has been done. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of these quotes. And it looks like when we go ahead and put this in, we're going to, we're going to see that there's two events. So I went ahead and sent it in the chat if that makes it easier for y'all. And there's two events. So we were just looking at this 9 a.m. one. This might be a different time on your end, but I'm going to check for the one that's even earlier. Okay. Then based on what we did for challenge two, let's see how we can do challenge three. So um, we haven't done challenge three yet. Also to let you all know, like solving these on the challenges.mlh.io, don't, I don't believe give you points. You get points for coming to the workshop, checking in and doing the workshop quiz. So um, yeah, so we're doing challenge three right now. Okay. So now we have the similar thing. We're gonna scroll down, keep scrolling down. It looks like we're also getting base64decode.org. So it makes me think, oh, this is probably very, very similar to whatever, um, it's probably very similar to whatever challenge two was. I'm gonna go ahead and keep scrolling down. Challenge two had a certain URL that we're gonna use. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, we found that same URL here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. And I'm gonna go back to this decode, um, decode, um, base64decode.org. And I'm going to remove all the unnecessary bits. So just the, just everything after U equals. And I'm gonna decode right here. Scroll down for the moment of truth. And it looks like we got the last flag. Okay, check it out, y'all. We got the last flag. It's just last one. We did that the same way we got flag two. So notice how there's patterns and things, and we keep building off what we did before. So to kind of recap how we did that, we went ahead and we got rid. Of, we made sure we got rid of the IP address filter, and we just went ahead and used the asterisk as a wild card to kind of see, you know, we know the URL is gonna start with admin, plugins, easy password recovery, but we don't know what the rest of it is. So we have the asterisk there for a partial result. Then we found that there's two logs and we got that same weird URL again. And fun fact, um, the beginning point right here that says or percent 201% 3D 1% 20, is the URL encoding of or one equal equal one. And this is a sign of SQL injection. SQL is, stands for a structured query language. And the way you can do a SQL injection is if you trick the database into saying, into thinking that it's true, it'll print out all the information. So if you're like searching, the if you have a um, database query and it's like search by names, you do whatever name, and then you say, or one equal equal one. That's gonna make it true for everything, and then it's gonna give you all the information you wanted, not just that original name you entered. Okay. Then we went ahead and we just decoded that last bit using base 64. Okay, so it looks like we got all done. So to recap what we did, we did um, we use security information and event management to figure out more about, um, we used it with Elastic Security to learn more about how we can prevent uh, threats and how we can analyze logs. Also, what's really cool is that Elastic Security, as you've been able to tell, is a free and open solution that allows people to prevent, detect, and respond to threats just using SIM or endpoint security or threat hunting or cloud monitoring or so much more. You'll see that this is just a service that you can get a free trial from for 30 days or 14 days, and it has all of this and more. It's not too hard to set up.
So what also might be kind of cool for you all to try after this workshop, if you want to extend it, is try to add your own device logs and see, has anyone hacked you? Or you can also try using Nectric Beat um, as a way to check to see if you, have, if you have any intruders. And you can also create some rules that allow you to flag events um, after they happen instead of having to query from the old database. So that helps you detect them sooner. So now we're gonna go ahead and do a quiz. So this is a quiz right here. This is how you get guild points. Okay. Let's do this together. Let's see what we learned. I'm also, you know, I'm gonna try to avoid answering any questions, whether they're right or wrong, just so we can see what's up. Okay, we attended um, Introduction to Threat Hunting with Elastic Security. It's all the way at the bottom. Um, Major League Hacking organized this event. Um, we're also going to say in it. Actually, we're going to just go ahead and put it in it. And then we're going to go ahead and oops, we're going to put in whatever email address we use to sign up. I'm going to zoom in a little more. Oh, I'm glad you all came to the session. I know it's pretty late for everyone, or pretty early. Either, one, either way, time zones are crazy. OK, so let's do this together. One, what is the CIA triad in security? Is it A, code infosec authentication, B, confidentiality, integrity, availability, or C, computation, information, automation? If you're wondering where the link is, it's just mlhlocal.host slash quiz. Looks like we have two people going for B. Let's go ahead and try B. Then, what is the purpose of SIM? Can anyone, uh, can anyone say what SIM stands for in chat? What does SIM stand for in chat? That might help you get the answer. Um, is the purpose A, to allow organizations to detect and investigate incidents? B, to collect data so organizations can understand their users? Or C, to search through any big data set? Yeah, SIM is Security Incident and Event Management. Nice job, y'all. Okay, looks like we're getting someone saying first. So the first answer, does anyone agree, disagree? What do y'all think? Agree, so we'll go ahead and say first answer, yes. So how would you typically use a SIM? Deter and this is a select all that apply. So let's say one, two, three, four, and five. One, determine if other people have used an attack, attack vector. B, or two, find out how a security breach happened. Three, detect hacking attempts as they occur. Four, find out information about hackers. And five, collaborate with your team on security issues. It looks like we're getting a all of these. Okay. So let's go ahead and click through this. Fun fact, there is a little survey that kind of helps us see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing really quick so that way, you know, I can go ahead and click through these. And let's go ahead and see what happens. Give me a sec and we'll see whether or not these answers are right. And we'll see actually that all of our answers are right. We got seven out of seven. So we got a one out of one on the first one. We got a one out of one on the second one. And we got a five out of five on the last one. Okay. So congratulations, y'all. Thank you for coming. Um, Let's see what's next on the schedule. 
do and it's mlh.io. Let's check out what that schedule is and see what can we um, what can we find next. So it looks like today is Tuesday. This is the last thing for tonight, but it looks like starting Wednesday, we have a fellowship Q and A. Um, we, have, we have a fellowship Q and A at 11 a.m. ET, um, but it also looks like 2.30 a.m. ET, we have Chrome Dino. So make sure to check out all these events um, it's honestly in it is one of my favorite times. I love having these special week long activities. It's the favorite. It's my favorite part for getting involved in MLH. I feel like this is where you make the most unique connections. Um, so definitely check out all the different events. And I want to say thank you to everyone who attended. I hope you all have a great time. Um, at this point, make sure you join the discord discord.nlh.io you can find out more information about in it in it.nlh.io and you can also tweet me down here i'm at mara drinks milk and i also have a twitch if you want to come say hi so i hope y'all are having a wonderful day and i will see you i will see you actually wait one second i will see you tomorrow Sorry, my, my camera went a little off. But thank you for everyone coming. Um, my next workshop is going to be sorry Thursday um, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. I'll be doing a Twilio-powered game. I'm thinking of making it a text adventure game, and we'll see how it goes. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Um, have a wonderful rest of your week. Um, and if, you, if I don't see you again, have a wonderful weekend, OK? Happy Tuesday, and I hope y'all are having a great time. Okay, see y'all.